Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Hope you're doing well on this Friday or Saturday whenever we decide to release this episode. I'm not quite sure yet, but that doesn't matter because you know what matters? We have new merch that you all need to check out. It just works, ray traced everything. You just, you guys just need to buy the merch because it's just so gosh dang good. Whether it's a hoodie because you're cold in the Northern Hemisphere, it's a t-shirt because you're warm in the summer here in the Southern Hemisphere. It doesn't matter, just pick up some merch. You know you want it. Anyways, we'll leave a link for that in the video description. Don't forget we have our 200,000 subscriber giveaway going on for that RTX 2080 Ti and one terabyte NVMe drive, courtesy of Wootware. You can check that out at the link in the video description as well. And with that being said, let's jump on into the hot news. First, Lee, we're gonna talk about Intel and their brand new GPUs that are coming out. Now this uh, is something that's pretty exciting because while we talked about AMD potentially revealing more information about their Zen 2 lineup at GDC, Intel has actually confirmed what they're going to be talking about at GDC with regards to their GPUs. Now it's going to be surrounding their Gen 11 graphics, which is going to be the predecessor for their desktop GPU that they're going to be bringing out. As you can see here, this is where Gen 11 lies and then Project Z, X to the power E, whatever the crap it's called. What, what did we decide we were going to say it is? Z! Yes. Project Z from Intel is going to be all the way from integrated and entry-level GPUs to data center and AI, including the desktop graphics cards that we're expecting. But the big things that we should be looking forward to with the Gen 11 graphics, which is the stepping stone to what's coming up, is the fact that they're quoting that in the mobile scenario, in the integrated GPU, they should be getting one teraflop of GPU performance, which is uh, honestly phenomenal considering the original Xbox One had 1.4 teraflops of performance. One teraflop in just an integrated chip is pretty intense. This is due to the fact that they're building it on 10 nanometer. They hired a whole bunch of graphics people and they're just actually investing in graphics development. They're going to have HDR, they're going to have FreeSync, they're going to have variable rate shading. So there's a lot of features that are coming to Intel's integrated graphics that we should expect with their dedicated graphics and we should have a clear understanding of where they're going to go for Z in the future. Uh, now once we get more details from them at GDC which is happening in just over a month's time. So this is pretty exciting. I can't wait to see what coming out uh, and what, what we'll get to know about their new GPUs. So that, that's exciting. We got time to wait for that. But you know what's not exciting? NVIDIA and their fact that they are not earning as much money as they expected to. We talked about in an episode last week how they revised their earnings down by quite a bit, saying that Q4 wasn't as good as we thought it was going to be, so uh, temper your expectations. And now we actually have their reported revenue, and expectations definitely should have been tempered considering they're down 24% from year on year and then also down 31% from the previous quarter. It was pretty rough. Jensen himself said, this was a turbulent close to what had been a great year. The combination of post crypto excess channel and inventory and recent deteriorating end market conditions drove a disappointing quarter. So on top of that, Jensen also said that the 2070 and the 2080 did not sell as well as they were expecting to for, for reasons that are not proper. <clears throat> because uh, and as Tom's Hardware puts it here, NVIDIA opined that gamers might be waiting for more real world examples of ray trace games, which were notably absent at the launch of Turing GPUs before purchasing a new graphics card. No. Nobody cares about ray tracing. Nobody w was waiting for anything. They just want decently priced graphics cards, which the RTX cards are not. You lower the price, people will buy it. If you change the price without releasing any more RTX games, you're gonna see an increase in sales. It's pretty simple. Whether or not that would lead to an increase in revenue because of how many units they would sell at the lower price, I don't know if that would exceed the lower volume of units at the higher price. I'm not a forecaster for major companies, so I can't really tell you. I just, I know that the reason people aren't buying them has nothing to do with the RTX games. It has everything to do with the price that they're at. Jensen also revealed that uh, the reason that the 2060 was delayed was because they did have an overabundance of 1060s left in their inventory due to the collapse of the cryptocurrency market. He said specifically the inability to launch the 2060 was a big inhibitor for us, which, but we did so at CES. The only reason they couldn't was because they chose not to, not because that they actually couldn't launch it. So 
I don't know, Nvidia is not doing too well. Hopefully that changes with the 1660 Ti. We actually have images of the die itself. This thing looks pretty tiny, especially compared to the RTX dies that are out there. Uh, obviously woods because there are no tensor cores, there are no ray tracing cores. So it's just the simple CUDA core setup. As you can see here, this is the TU106 chip. And then over here is the TU116 chip. So it indeed is smaller. Hopefully the smaller cooling solutions will perform Ad admirably. And then there are also more pictures of MSI's versions of the GTX 1660 Ti. My friends, this card is a reality. The 1660 Ti is a thing. We just have to get over it. I, I just, ah, that's how I feel about the name. Then we also have news about Microsoft releasing a new update to Insiders for uh, versions that they're developing for Windows 10. And it was a surprise one because they're releasing the one that's gonna be released in April 20. 20 and not in 2019 because they said that they're working on features that are going to take a long time to incubate, which means that they need to get them out to the insider testers right now in order to be ready for the launch in April of 2020. So that's kind of neat, but there's no major feature changes in this new update, but they should be coming sometime soon as they continue to roll out new updates of the 20H1 update for Windows 10. It's curious. I'm not sure if we're going to get another Windows. This whole Windows is just going to continually update itself seems to be the way Microsoft wants to go. I don't know. We'll see if we get. And then Asus and Razer are in talks with Tencent to develop new gaming smartphones. This is because China is actually the largest video game player in the world when it comes to mobile phones, especially since they had a ban on consoles and console games that had to get approved to the government and that was only recently lifted. So I mean, mobile phone games are, are, are massive over there. So them working with Tencent, which is a massive Chinese company, makes a whole lot of sense. Um, Asus apparently approached Tencent, then found out Razer was working on it. They haven't actually released a statement out on this, but it looks like uh, there might be some uh, good developments coming on. And then do you like fines? Facebook does because it looks like they're going to be slapped with the largest fine in FTC history due to some of the leaks that have happened regarding consumer data in things like the Cambridge Analytica leak during the 2016 elections and a whole bunch of other shenanigans that uh, the government is saying that Facebook is up to. The current record for the FTC fine is $22.5 million by Google in 2012. So, I mean, $23 million would set the record and wouldn't be that much money for a multi-billion dollar company, especially when Zux himself is worth billions of dollars. And then Airbus is ending the production of the A380, especially because their largest customer for the A380s, Emirates Airlines, is cutting back on their order. So Airbus just decided to scrap the whole thing. They said that this could potentially affect 3,000 to 3,500 jobs, but they're going to do their best to do some internal restructuring to make sure that not everybody loses a job here. But Emirates has said that even though they might not be buying as many, they're committed to using A380s until 2030s. So yay for airplanes that are really old in a while. And then LG has announced that on the new G8 Think or ThinQ, however you're supposed to say it, they're actually going to be using the OLED screen as a resonance chamber to make the speakers work more effectively in a way that is it's pretty cool because they're using an exciter on the OLED panel, and then it's supposed to give you higher volume, deeper bass, and cleaner audio. I'm excited to get my hands on this. I actually would want to try this out. You know, LG has sometimes given themselves into gimmicks, especially with like a smartphone with five cameras, but this one actually seems pretty cool. I might actually check this one out. And then Apple's being forced to check out something that they didn't want to, which is Qualcomm chips in their iPhones because they got banned in Germany from selling certain models of iPhones because Qualcomm won a lawsuit against them about patent infringement and so Apple is just like, fine, I'll use your stuff, okay? Qualcomm, you happy now? We're gonna sell our phones and we're not gonna like it. Ugh. And you know what else? I don't like the fact that we can't edit tweets. It's an abomination. And the CEO of Twitter says, uh, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to edit tweets, but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we could have you clarify your statements. Jack Dorsey talking about how uh, they could enable people to clarify past tweets by updating them and making the original tweet uninteractable. Uninteractable? You're unable to interact with it. <laughs> New word! So that the people couldn't retweet the original tweet if you don't like the context of what happened and then you can clarify it by providing context and they can retweet that, but then clarifying it won't like push it into people's feeds like it's a new tweet. And then he talks about saying that like, 
like uh, the reason they're doing this is because like people go back and uh, like I don't I don't understand why he can't just make an edit function like what's on Facebook when you edit a Facebook post they show you the original and then they show you the edit there's nothing complicated about this they have a massive team. I'm sure they can do this. I don't understand why they're so opposed to it. How does clarifying accomplish anything? I don't know what they're trying to fix. People can delete the tweets if they want or clarifying is no better than editing. I don't get this. What am I missing? Let me know down in the comments. And in case you're a Star Wars fan, Marvel is actually going to be reissuing a copy of their Star Wars comic book. It's gonna be a one issue episode basically of the original Star Wars comics uh, since Marvel Comics is celebrating 80 years and it's gonna take place where the original Star Wars one closed off, but it's only gonna be one edition, so it's not gonna be this whole sweeping arc of storyline, but uh, yeah, cool information for nerds. I mean nerds in the most positive light, I think. And then in case you've been on tech internet anywhere in the past couple of days, uh, there's been this whole windstorm of Vox Media, who owns The Verge, copy striking Bitwitch channel for his parody video that he did of Lyle, criticizing The Verge's build video, and it, I mean, it was completely not the right way to do it. Vox Media, who has previously in the past said that YouTube's copyright system is being abused, then went on to abuse it themselves because they didn't like what was happening, even though it was clearly under fair use because it was a parody and not necessarily just him reposting their content. It's a whole big messed up thing, but there's updates to this. Bitwit actually revealed that his counter notification to Vox's claim was reviewed by YouTube and they're reinstating the video and saying, bad Vox. This is not how this is supposed to go. You're not supposed to do that. It's actually good to see that YouTube's actually doing something about this since in situations like this, I've always known them to just be like, I don't know what to do. We can't do anything. Go talk to the lawyers. So I'm glad they're sticking up for, uh, for our people. And in case you wanted to get hyped about the Anthem video game, Neil Blomkamp just released a live action trailer for Anthem, uh, which like, I guess, is this set in the same universe as District 9 and Chappie? Those are like based on a true story, right? Like, I, I wasn't here when they happened, so like, I'm sure that's like how South Africa was right before I moved here. It's actually kind of cool to get people hyped for a game that's clearly a Destiny Warframe ripoff. And in case you like Doctor Who, uh, and the fact that there's no show being run this year, for whatever reason, they're just not gonna air in 2019, they're actually making a VR episode that's gonna be 12 minutes long, and you guys can interact with the Doctor in VR. Yay! And if you like Hot Wheels, they just released a pretty cool new toy called Tech Mods, which allow you to remote control the car from your phone, but then also you can use the car as a controller for a video game that you can put on your phone. This is kind of dope. I actually, I actually really like this. Hot Wheels is releasing this on Indiegogo. It's about $50 right now, but it's actually kind of sweet. I might actually pick one of these up for my kids. And then Samsung is going to be opening three stores for the launch of the Galaxy S10 on February 20th. Hopefully, uh, uh, these aren't in partnership with the fake Supreme that they launched their other stores with in the other country? Maybe, probably not. I, if I had to guess, they're not, they're not gonna pull that one off here. But Samsung also pulled another oopsie when they updated their wearables OS to include some information about new wearables that they're gonna be launching on February 20th. They outed the Galaxy Watch Active, the Galaxy Fit, and their brand new Galaxy Buds. Obviously, we don't have a whole lot of information besides what they are. We don't have specs or anything like that. We'll have to wait for February 20th. So let me know if you're excited for that down in the comments. Anyways, that's gonna wrap up hot news for today. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Pick up our merch, sign up for the giveaway. It's international for everybody out in the world. Hit the like button. Get subscribed, I already said that. And I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.